Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful night. Excuse me, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Excuse me, if you are watching this at night or in the evening, I hope you had a wonderful day. My name is Tamika Collins, and this is my YouTube channel. You can follow me on my Facebook at Tamika Collins. You can follow me on TikTok as Coffee, C-O-F-E-P-H, or on my Instagram, which is Coffee Sing, C-O-F-E-P-H-S-I-N-G-S, -S, all one word. Thank you so much for rocking with me. We are reading Genesis to Revelations in this good book, this good word here from the Lord. And we are in chapter 37. You know we recap. So we just finished reading chapter 36. Um, Esau's descent. It was pretty much about Esau's descendants. Um, lots of sons and clans of many. Um, the Edomites were the descendants of Edom, which is also Esau's other name. And they lived south of the south and east of the Dead Sea. Um, and I wanted to read a little insert of, because I know y'all know we read from the Life Study Application Bible. So it has all these good stuff, all this good stuff. So a little bit about that, so I can kind of wrap up also. Um, they were descend the descendants of Esau. During Israel's exodus from Egypt, God told the Israelites to leave the Edomites alone because they were relatives um, and you can read that in Deuteronomy 2, 4, and 5. But Edom refused to let them enter into the land, the, and later the Edomites became bitter enemies of King David. The nations of Edom and Israel shared the same ancestor, Isaac, and the same border. But the Israelites looked down on the Edomites because they were intermarried with the Canaanites. Don't that go on now? Mm-mm-mm. Anywho, we're in chapter 37, and it reads as this. <clears throat> so Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpha. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a word, a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it they hated him even more listen to my dream he said we were out in the field trying up tying up bundles of grain suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles gathered around and bowed lower to me his brothers responded so you think you will be our king do you do you actually think you will reign over us and they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them Soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I've had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well as his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Soon after his Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem, when they had gone been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, "Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready, and I will sing you to them." I'm ready to go, Joseph replied. Go and see how your brothers and the flock are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him away, and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from the area noticed him wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for, he asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pastoring their sheep? Yes, the, old, the man told him. 
they have moved on from here, but I heard them say, let's go down to Dotham. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dotham and found them there. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in his, in his distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of those cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into an empty cistern where here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our, our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off his beautiful robe he was wearing. Then he grabbed, then they grabbed him and threw him into a cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a cavern, caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by. Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Sometime later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. Then he went back to his brothers and lamented, The boy is gone. What will I do now? Then the brothers killed the young goat and dipped Joseph's blood in the, in the robe in the blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their fathers with this message. Look what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal has must have eaten him. Joseph was clear has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son. He would say and he would weep. Meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was a captain of the palace guard. Chapter 38. About this time, Judah left home and moved to Adullam where he had stayed with a man named Hira. There he saw a Canaanite woman, the daughter of Shua, and he married her. When he slept with her, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and he named the boy Er. Then she became pregnant again and gave birth to another son, and she named him Onan. And when she gave birth to the third son, she named him Sheila. At the time of Sheila's birth, they were living in Kezeb. In the course of time, Judah arranged for his firstborn son, Er, to marry a young woman named Tamar. But Er was a wicked man in the Lord's sight, so the Lord took his life. Then Judah said to Er's brother, Onan, go and marry Tamar. As our law requires the brother of a man who has died, you may, must produce an heir for your brother. But Onan was not willing to have a child who would not be his own heir. So whenever it had, whenever he had intercourse with his brother's wife, he spilled the semen on the ground. This prevented her from having a child who would belong to his brother. But the Lord considered it evil for Onan to deny a child to his dead brother. So the Lord took Onan's life too. Wow. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, go back to your parents' home and remain a widow until my son Shayla is old enough to marry you. But Judah didn't really attend 
to do this because he was afraid Sheila would also die like his two brothers. So Tamar went back to live with her father's in her father's home. Soon years, some years later, Judah's wife died. After the time of mourning was over, Judah and his friend Harah and the Dulamite went up to Timnah to supervise the shearing of the sheep. Someone told Tamar, look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah Timna to shear the sheep. Tamar was aware that Sheila was, had grown up, but no arrangements had been made for her to come to marry him. So she changed out of her widow's clothing and covered herself with a veil to disguise herself. Then she sat beside the road at the entrance of the village of Enam, which is on the road to Timna. Judah noticed her and thought she was a prostitute since she had covered her face. So he stopped and propositioned her. Let me have sex with you, he said, not realizing that she was his own daughter-in-law. How will you pay for pay to have sex with me, Tamar asked. I'll send you a young goat from my flock, Judah promised. But what will you give me to guarantee that you will send the goat, she asked. What kind of guarantee do you want, he asked. She answered, let me... Leave me your identification seal and its cord and the walking stick you are carrying. So Judah gave them to her. Then he had intercourse with her and she became pregnant. Afterwards, she went back home, took off her veil and put on her widow's clothing as usual. Later, Judah asked his friend, Harad the Adulamite, to take the young goat to <clears throat> the woman and to pick up the things he had given her as his guarantee. But Harar couldn't find her, so he asked the man who lived there, where can I find the shrine prostitute who was sitting beside the road at the entrance of Enam? We've never had a shrine prostitute here, he, they replied. So Herod returned to Judah and told him, I couldn't find her anywhere. And the men of the village claimed they've never had a shrine prostitute there. Then let her keep her things I gave her, said Judah. I sent the young goat as we agreed, but you couldn't find her. We'd be the laughing stock of the village if we went back again to look for her. After three months later, Judah was told, Tamar, your granddaughter in law has acted like a prostitute, and now because of this, she's pregnant. Bring her out, he left, and let her be burned, Judah demanded. But as they were taking her out to kill her, she sent this message to her father-in-law. The man who owns these things made me pregnant. Look closely. Whose seal and cord and walking stick are these? Judah recognized them and immediately said, She is more righteous than I am because I didn't arrange for her to marry my son, Sheila. And Judah never slept with Tamar again. When the time came for Tamar to give birth, it was discovered that she was carrying twins. While she was in labor, one of the babies reached out his hand. The midwife grabbed it and tied a scarlet string around the child's wrist, announcing this one came out first. But then he pulled back his hand and out came his brother. What? The midwife exclaimed. How did you break out first? So she named him Perez. Then the baby with the scarlet string on his wrist was named Zara. Wow. So he wasn't ready to be born yet. <laughs> Anywho, that was good. That was chapter 37 and 38. And you know me. I got to get into the meat of things, give y'all a good old recap. And we going to figure out, not figure out, but see and, uh, you know, summarize what all went down here. And we'll be back with the next video. Thank you so much for rocking with me. And you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. All right. Or night if you're watching this in the evening time. Thank you so much. Peace.